All right, folks, it is fabric time. Welcome to the second installation of Mark Ora's modding tutorials. To recap, in the last video, we set up IntelliJ IDEA and set up our Java development kit. Now we are going to create our fabric modding workspace and finally start up the game using our IDE. So let's get started. Start by downloading the fabric example mod from GitHub. The link will be in the description. There will be several files here, but the one you're looking for is fabric example mod. Upon clicking it, all you need to do is click the download symbol, go down to the drop down menu, and then click download zip. We are now in fabric territory. I will walk you through the process, but if you have any questions that I did not address, please refer to the fabric wiki at the link shown above, or leave a comment down below with any questions. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Additionally, I'm going to upload all code I use in this series up to GitHub so that you can use it for your own personal reference. Once you have the fabric example mod master file, you're going to want to extract it. You can do this in any folder, but I would recommend doing it in a directory folder where you keep all of your mods. For me, I just put this in my documents. I have a modding folder, directories, and I have all my mods. For this one, I'll create a new folder, call it tutorial. We can import the fabric example mod master into the tutorial folder. The fabric example mod comes with a license, but this one doesn't apply to any mods you'll be making, so you can delete that. The readme file is also something you don't really need, but I'll keep it because it's not hurting anybody. You're welcome to delete it if you want. Perhaps the most important file here is the build.gradle file. This is what's going to let you access all of the files that are inside of this folder. We're going to do this with our IDE. Click open, and then navigate to the directory you have just installed. Click on build.gradle and press OK. Open as a project, and you can click Trust Project. I personally believe Fabric is a trustworthy source. It will take a couple minutes to set up the environment, so just be patient. Once it's set up, there are several steps you need to take to make this mod your own. Currently, there is an example mod, Fabric MC example, and this is basically all the required files to import a mod into Minecraft. For this, you're going to want to go to Gradle, Fabric, and then Run Client. This is a decent test to see if your mod has been imported successfully. After clicking the Run Client, you can now use this little play button up here, which will basically do the same thing, but it will start up the client loading your mod. Now to transform this mod into your own mod, you're going to want to edit various files. This includes the Gradle properties, Mod ID, Mixins, Fabric Mod, the icon, the main class, in this case Example Mod, and these packages here. We'll start by adding a new package in the Fabric MC package here. You can name this whatever you like, likely the name of your mod. For the purposes of our tutorial, I'm going to name this Tutorial. Very original, I know. I'd like to copy both of these files from the example mod and put them into the tutorial. IntelliJ will refactor each of these files as changing their location has effects on their contents. You can now delete the example package and change the package address to the current one that you have here. IntelliJ IDEA will automatically do this for you. If you'd like to change the name of your mixin and main class, you can do so as well by going to Refactor, Rename, and then name it whatever you'd like. I will choose Tutorial Mixin. When I make Minecraft mods, I prefer to name my main class Main. Now, you just need to make sure that the fabric mod JSON file and the tutorial mod mixins both have the proper names for the two files you have just changed. Again, IDEA will do this for you automatically. Here we have tutorial.mixin, the client tutorial mixin, that's correct. And here we can change the mod ID. We'll change this to tutorial mod. We'll change the name to tutorial mod you can change the description authors and you can include sources homepage and various other elements that you can change as you please. One important step is to change the mod ID folder inside of your resources and assets folder. 
You can do this by using the refactor tool. You'll notice that these addresses will no longer line up. You need to change every single instance of mod ID to your current mod ID. You must also do this to the mixins.json, and you can do that by replacing mod ID with your current mod ID. This will automatically be updated in the fabric mod JSON file. And we're all set. You can close out all of these files, and now you're ready to start modding. A couple things I recommend doing are installing these mods. You will need cloth config, mod menu, optifine, and roughly enough items. These mods enable you to test your recipes, test your mod settings, and various other things with ease. You can do this just by going into the run mods folder and dragging and dropping them here. In my case, I will copy and paste them. I will have a link for each one of these mods in the description of this video. I'm going to run a quick test, and you can see now there's a mod tab. Here you will see every single mod you've imported into the game, as well as your mod. Our name change worked, it is now called the tutorial mod, the tutorial description is here, and yes, our links also work. So, how can you change this icon? You can do this simply by changing the icon PNG here. You can do this by opening in Explorer. And I like to use paint.net. You can change this any way you like, and believe it or not, you can also change the resolution. I'm going to use a couple images I have just from video editing. Just remember, as long as your canvas is completely square, it will work in the program. You can do this by adjusting the canvas size and making both of these values equal. You can make this icon as goofy or as serious as you like. Creating a mod icon will just give a potential user an impression of your mod. Let's reload the client. And now you can see when we go into our mods folder, the mod icon has been updated. I'll I'll say that's not my best work, but it's a proof of concept. Now, you may realize when you go into the world, nothing is really different. That will be the focus of our next video where we add blocks and items. That being said, this has been Mark Ora. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope this video has been informative and helpful for you in setting up your modding workspace. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. Please leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos. Adios, and I'll see you in the next video.